in this room is only one man here that can bench over 400 pounds. One man who uh, has been known to squat almost 1,000 pounds. Uh, everybody put your hands together for Tanin's older brother, Naini. The most popular man in Houston. Hi, everybody. Well, I'm Naeem, I'm Tanin's older brother, and uh, AKA Real Time. And uh, it's a very joyous occasion for my family and for all of us to come here together and welcome Fatim to Houston and to our families. And uh, I guess I'll be begin, uh, I didn't really write much, but you know, I'm, I like to keep it real. Uh, so I'm gonna, you know, let it out and say, when I first heard my brother was getting married and I was like, oh, okay, you know, I, I didn't know a lot of details. And I heard, uh, yeah, you know, his wife's in Saki, Morocco. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and I was like, you know, the Bengali of the word. I was like, what kind of ganjam is this? <laughs> and I looked at my mom and I was like, really? Seriously? And, you know, so I just kind of went with it and, you know, see how everything progressed. And, and as soon as uh, the time came for the wedding, and my dad was like, did you buy your ticket yet? And I was like, no, you know, I'll get to it, I'll get to it. And then, uh, you know, so December came of last year, and then I got it, and then we were in Morocco. So now, Safi is, it's what, 100 and something miles from Casablanca? Okay, so we come to the airport, and Casablanca is beautiful, you know, Morocco is a beautiful country. And all of a sudden, we, uh, one of the chauffeurs from Safi comes to pick us up to take her, because it's so far away. And it's a 1975 Mercedes Benz. And it's like, you can see the Scotch tape on front of the, the headlights. And this guy named Zaman, I think, right? Zaman. Yeah, I mean, wonderful guy. Wonderful guy. And I told my parents, there is no way in heck I'm getting into that car. And I said, I'm taking a cab or a taxi or, I mean, I'll take a boat down the coast. But I am not getting there. My parents said, we have no choice. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. So we got in late, and it was like an hour, and the guy did not speak any English. It was either Arabic or French. And, you know, I know a little bit, I'm not like my brother, speaks full in Arabic, and I know a little bit, you know, that, you know, they hear it there, you know, and, and, not, and you know, he, he speaks Moroccan Arabic, so I was like, he had no idea. So we couldn't even speak to him, and it's a one-way dirt road to Safi, and when it's in the middle of the night and you see these huge trucks coming, I'm like, man, I'm gonna close my eyes and just say this in line and hopefully when we get back. So, when we finally got there to Safi, and we met Fatim's parents, stuff got really, really real. And everything became a reality. And their family, their dad, Hassan, he is so nice, so awesome. And mom, Malika, I mean, their whole family, it was like our long lost family. Uh, we had never seen and we can't communicate with. Everything was alhamdulillah, mashallah, inshallah, and just eat, 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 eat. But it was, I mean, other, I mean, I've never, I mean, I like to eat, you guys, I love to eat. Let's keep it real. Okay? You know, and they did, they, they helped me with what I needed not to be doing with eating. And I mean, it was one of the most uh, amazing times and, uh, I, I, you know, and I guess, you know, the, the game was real, you know, and I was, I was so happy, and uh, Fatina has been a very, very big light in our family, and I've never had a sister, and, you know, we love her very much, and I'm so happy for my brother, and a couple things, you know, just growing up, you know, my brother's my younger brother, but, you know, some, I'll share a couple of stories here and there, there's one, you know, where I used to tell, I, you know, anyone who knows me, you know, I'll you know, in the dark. So, but I will, will say he was scared of the dark, and I was sneak into his room and sneak into his bed, and then tell my mom he was scared. <laughs> but, you know, when he, when, when he met with me, I was really happy, because my brother was kind of a late bloomer and things, you know, like, he played with toys until he was like in ninth grade. <laughs> I was a little bit worried for a little while, you know, and he watched cartoons in college, and, and I was like, man, I really hope you find somebody. <laughs> and, uh, you know, but, you know, I'm really like, you know, he, he worked out, you know, uh, I was a big fan of the gym. And, I mean, my brother, I mean, he's a genius. The guy speaks 
free language. You can work for the CIA. I don't know how you got that. So, but you know, I mean, he was an entrepreneur, like uh, you know, Chris and these guys are saying his crew, and uh, you know, the bubble gum business and the tennis brackets. I mean, the, the guy can make an idea out of anything, and I'm sure Michelle will be successful in anything you know that he puts his mind to, because you know, he was set on finding something that he wanted, and he found it. And uh, I, I give them all the best, and I pray for them all the time, and uh, inshallah, Allah gives them a long life, happy life together with uh, many beautiful nieces and nephews for me. <laughs> so I'm going to go there. Uh, thank you, Mama. That was great. Uh, that was a lot funnier than us, so it makes it feel a little worse. But um, now, straight from Melbourne. Lord, uh, we have Nyla, and she's going to be dancing for us. So thank you. Woo! 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 